I used to say to my daughter, there's the at home me, there's just regular me, Lonnie Anderson me, and then there's a tabloid me. I'm not the tabloid. I'm just your mom. And you know, we'll get through whatever it is because we're just real people with real families and real problems. And, and uh, you know, time passes and we were friends first. We were together for 12 years. Lonnie Anderson, a beloved actress from the 70s and advocate for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease awareness, has faced a life marked by personal tragedies, from family struggles to tumultuous marriages. As she nears her 80th birthday, Lonnie continues to grapple with the pain of a challenging childhood and four troubled marriages. Stay tuned as we delve into her story in this video. Let's begin. Lonnie Anderson, a talented actress hailing from St. Paul, Minnesota, was born in August 1946. From a young age, her undeniable beauty and charisma set her apart. In high school, she was crowned the Valentine Queen at the Winter Formal, a testament to her striking looks. However, Lonnie Anderson was not destined to be just a trophy wife. She possessed a sharp mind and an insatiable thirst for knowledge. In 1963, Anderson enrolled at the prestigious University of Minnesota. To support her education, she used her stunning looks to her advantage, participating in various beauty pageants. One notable achievement was winning the title of Miss Roseville, which earned her a spot in the Miss Minnesota competition. Although she ended up as a runner-up, even then Lonnie Anderson had her sights set on more significant goals than just beauty pageant crowns. However, her career ambitions took a detour, as life threw unexpected challenges her way. While still in college, she fell in love with Bruce Hasselbeck, and the two decided to get married. They soon welcomed a baby girl named Deidre into the world. Unfortunately, the marriage proved to be short-lived, leaving Anderson to navigate the role of a single working mother. Despite the difficulties she faced, Lonnie Anderson remained determined to pursue her dreams. It was during this challenging period that she discovered her true passion for acting. She began by taking on roles in local theater productions and commercials, which marked the beginning of her journey toward stardom. Lonnie Anderson's tenacity and talent would eventually propel her to become a renowned actress in the entertainment industry. In 1975, Lonnie Anderson and her second husband, Ross Bickle, made a pivotal decision to leave behind the cold winters of Minnesota and set their sights on the sunny skies of Los Angeles. Their goal was clear. They were determined to carve out a place for themselves in the highly competitive entertainment industry. Upon arriving in Los Angeles, Lonnie wasted no time and got to work immediately. She started booking supporting roles on various TV shows, quickly making a name for herself in the entertainment world. Some of the notable TV shows she appeared on included fan favorites like Barnaby Jones, The Bob Newhart Show, and The Incredible Hulk. Notably, she even auditioned for the role of Chrissy on the wildly popular sitcom Three's Company. While many may remember Suzanne Somers as the eventual choice for the role, it's worth mentioning that Lonnie Anderson's audition for the part was highly praised. John Ritter, the star of the show, expressed his confusion about why she didn't get the role, noting, she did a great audition. Despite this initial setback, it was clear that Lonnie Anderson's talents were not going unnoticed in the entertainment industry. Fate had bigger plans for her. In 1978, she achieved a significant breakthrough by landing the role of Jennifer Marlowe, the sultry and glamorous receptionist on the hit sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati. This role would prove to be a turning point in her career, catapulting her to fame and establishing her as a prominent figure in the world of television. When Lonnie Anderson was cast as Jennifer Marlowe on WKRP in Cincinnati, she initially harbored some reservations about the role. At the time, she was one of the few women on the show's set, and she was acutely aware of the risk that her character could be reduced to a one-dimensional stereotype. However, rather than simply declining the role, Anderson chose to confront the issue head-on. She expressed her concerns to the show's writers and insisted that her character, Jennifer, should be given more depth and intelligence. 
her assertiveness and commitment to avoiding a shallow portrayal of her character paid off. Thanks to Anderson's advocacy for her character's development, the show's writers rose to the occasion and equipped Jennifer Marlowe with a razor-sharp wit and a dynamic personality. This move marked a significant departure from the stereotypical roles that women often had in television at the time. Lonnie Anderson's character became a trailblazer, breaking new ground for female characters on TV by portraying a woman with substance and complexity. Another aspect of the role that Anderson had to contend with was the decision to dye her hair blonde. Up to that point, she had been a brunette her entire life and was concerned that changing her hair color might impact how she was perceived as an actress. However, despite her reservations, Anderson made the decision to go blonde as part of her transformation into Jennifer Marlowe. This bold choice became an integral part of her image, and she has sported her signature blonde tresses ever since, solidifying her iconic status as an actress in the entertainment industry. Lonnie. Anderson has opened up about the duality of her personality, emphasizing the contrast between her public persona and her private self. According to the actress, the public image of her as a sex symbol does not align with her true self. In a revealing 1983 interview, Anderson candidly expressed her discomfort with being labeled a sex symbol, as it felt unnatural and overwhelming to her. She went as far as to explain that this label, in a way, had the potential to strip away her identity as a genuine, multifaceted person. Despite her reservations about being pigeonholed as a sex symbol, Lonnie Anderson has always recognized the significance of her looks within the entertainment industry. In that same interview, she shared an intriguing anecdote about her co-star, Pat O'Brien. He had encouraged her to seize the opportunities presented in Hollywood, noting that there weren't many attractive comedians in the industry. After contemplating this advice for several months, Anderson decided to take the leap from theater to television. This decision proved to be a pivotal moment in her career. It's evident that Lonnie Anderson navigated the complex terrain of her public image and personal identity, ultimately leveraging her looks and talent to carve out a unique and enduring place for herself in the world of entertainment. During its four-year run, the TV series WKRP in Cincinnati featured a brilliantly hilarious ensemble cast, but it was Lonnie Anderson's character, Jennifer Marlowe, who often stole the spotlight. Jennifer Marlowe, with her stunning blonde hair and impeccable looks, managed to maintain an air of poise and elegance amidst the constant chaos that unfolded around her. She was characterized by her unwavering dedication to her boss, Mr. Carlson, but her tendency to leave her co-workers to fend for themselves added an intriguing dimension to her character. Her trademark look was a wardrobe filled with stylish, figure-hugging outfits that accentuated her curves in all the right places. Despite the sitcom's less-than-stellar ratings, it managed to cultivate a dedicated fan base, attracting teenagers, young adults, and even actual radio station employees who could relate to the antics of the show. It's no secret that Lonnie Anderson's captivating presence contributed significantly to the show's ability to remain on the air for the duration of its run. The original WKRP in Cincinnati concluded after airing a total of 90 episodes on April 21, 1982. However, the show found new life in syndication and exceeded the expectations of many by becoming a massive success for the following decade. In 1973, Anderson embarked on her second marriage, this time with Ross Bickle, who was an aspiring actor. They shared dreams of making it big in the entertainment industry, which led them to move to Los Angeles together. However, their marriage came to an end in 1981, while Anderson was still in the midst of her successful run on WKRP in Cincinnati. Arguably the most famous of Lonnie Anderson's marriages was her union with the Hollywood icon Burt Reynolds. They crossed paths while filming Stroker Ace in 1983 and fell in love. The couple adopted a son named Quentin Anderson Reynolds. Despite 12 years of marriage, their relationship eventually ended in a highly publicized and contentious divorce. 
This is the love story between Lonnie Anderson and Burt Reynolds. After divorcing his first wife, Burt Reynolds found it extremely difficult to get married again until he met Lonnie in 1983. The film Stroker Ace was released, following the adventures of its titular character, a NASCAR driver played by Burt Reynolds. Lonnie Anderson played a significant role as the character's love interest. While the film itself might not be widely remembered, the relationship that developed between Bert and Lonnie certainly left an indelible mark on the tabloids and public imagination. Their romance quickly became a subject of intense media scrutiny. Bert Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson dated for a number of years, and their relationship reached a pinnacle when they decided to tie the knot in 1988. Their wedding was a highly elaborate affair, with attendees flown in by helicopter to the picturesque location in Florida. The event garnered so much attention that it merited its own article in People magazine. To the public it appeared as though Bert and Lonnie were living a fairy tale life, basking in the glow of their love. However, what initially seemed like a dream marriage soon turned into a nightmare for the couple. Early into their marriage, they made the decision to adopt a son in the hope of bringing them closer together. Unfortunately, this intention was overshadowed by a multitude of issues that began to erode their relationship. One of the primary concerns that plagued their marriage was Lonnie Anderson's extravagant spending habits. Reports surfaced that Bert had given his wife a credit card with an astonishing spending limit of nearly $50,000, but Lonnie managed to exhaust this limit in less than an hour. This excessive spending became a point of contention in their relationship, adding to the tumultuous nature of their marriage. Rumors of infidelity swirled around both spouses, given their respective romantic histories. This didn't come as a major surprise to the public, but it nonetheless fueled the tabloids with sensational headlines and gossip about their relationship. The former power couple who had once seemed inseparable became fodder for increasingly dramatic and speculative stories in the media, turning their personal lives into a very public and tumultuous drama. As the 1990s unfolded, it became increasingly evident that the marriage between Burt Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson was heading towards its demise. The couple eventually divorced in 1994, marking the end of their tumultuous union. What followed the divorce was a very public and acrimonious battle, with Burt Reynolds making numerous appearances in the media to express his strong negative feelings about his former spouse. Burt's post-divorce comments were characterized by vitriol and harsh criticisms of Lonnie. He didn't shy away from openly airing his grievances, which drew significant media attention and scrutiny. On the other hand, Lonnie Anderson took a different approach, choosing not to retaliate or engage in public feuds with her ex-husband. She maintained her dignity by not stooping to his level in the public arena. However, Lonnie's decision to remain silent didn't last indefinitely. Eventually, she came forward with shocking and disturbing stories of abuse that she claimed to have suffered at the hands of Burt Reynolds during the course of their marriage. These revelations shed new light on the troubled relationship, sparking further public interest and controversy. At the time when Burt Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson had originally met, Burt was undeniably one of the biggest movie stars in the world. However, by the time of their 1994 divorce, both stars had seen a decline in their celebrity status. In fact, it could be argued that their relationship had become the primary source of notoriety for both of them, eclipsing their previous achievements. The contentious rumors and animosity that Burt Reynolds began to spread about his former wife dominated public attention, becoming the central focus of interest for both parties in the wake of their tumultuous divorce. After the divorce from Lonnie Anderson, Burt Reynolds faced significant financial difficulties, to the point where he filed for bankruptcy. This financial burden likely fueled his decision to repeatedly bring up the notion that his marriage to Anderson had cost him a substantial amount of money. Burt publicly criticized his former wife, accusing her of being excessively materialistic and unable to be seen wearing the same outfit more than once. He portrayed her as someone who had squandered his wealth 
and made his post-divorce financial situation even more challenging. In response to Bert's relentless attacks in the media, Lonnie initially adhered to her vow not to stoop to his level and engage in a public war of words. However, she eventually changed her mind, realizing that she needed to share her side of the story. When Lonnie Anderson began to reveal her own perspective on their troubled marriage, the stories she told were far more damning than Bert's accusations of a spendthrift wife. Lonnie claimed that Bert had been physically abusive to her on numerous occasions during their marriage. She described instances where he had threatened her, telling her that no one would believe her over him due to his greater fame and notoriety. Bert, on his part, contended that the marriage fell apart because Lonnie had refused to be intimate with him for three years. He even shared a story that his mother had allegedly warned him against marrying Lonnie during the wedding ceremony. In hindsight, Bert acknowledged that perhaps he should have heeded his mother's advice. However, if Lonnie's stories of abuse are true, Bert's reputation and career arguably deserved the damage that came alongside his tumultuous divorce. Bert Reynolds experienced a significant decline in his life and career following his divorce from Lonnie Anderson. However, he was given a second chance when he was cast in the 1997 film Boogie Nights. This film, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, was a 1970s period piece and featured Burt Reynolds as a pornographic film director whose fortunes took a downturn after a successful career. The parallel between the character and Burt's own life at that time was striking, and the film marked a significant turning point in his career, helping him regain some of his lost stature in Hollywood. The public had a challenging time reconciling Burt Reynolds's rejuvenated stardom with Lonnie Anderson's allegations of physical abuse during their marriage. However, by the time of Burt's death in 2008, it appears that both the public and Lonnie herself had reached a point of forgiveness. Reports indicated that the two had managed to mend their relationship to the extent that they were able to sit down and have dinner together in the years before Burt's passing. Lonnie consistently maintained her claims of physical abuse during their marriage, but she also emphasized that Bert had always been a loving father. Bert Reynolds emerged as a complicated figure in the eyes of the public during the time of their divorce. Bert Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson were in the spotlight, competing for tabloid coverage alongside Princess Diana. The couple's tumultuous relationship often overshadowed other high-profile stories in the media. In recognition of this, Princess Diana reportedly sent Burt Reynolds a card to thank him for diverting attention away from her in the tabloids during that period. As part of their divorce settlement, Burt owed money to Lonnie Anderson, and this financial obligation persisted until just a year before his death in 2018. Burt struggled to keep up with the substantial payments, partly due to his sporadic work in the later stages of his life. Nevertheless, he eventually managed to fulfill his financial obligations to her. Burt Reynolds passed away from a heart attack at the age of 82. Throughout his life, Burt Reynolds made it clear that he believed he and Lonnie Anderson were never meant to be together. He maintained that the only true love of his life was actress Sally Field. Burt and Sally had met while filming Smokey and the Bandit together and had developed a romantic relationship. However, their relationship eventually fell apart primarily due to Bert's struggles with substance abuse, which continued during his marriage to Lonnie Anderson and played a role in his problematic behavior. After Bert Reynolds' death, Sally Field published a memoir titled In Pieces. In the memoir, Sally expressed relief that Bert had passed away before its publication, as it contained revelations about their relationship that were not favorable to him. After a few years, Fate had other plans for Anderson, and she found happiness in her fourth and current marriage to Bob Flick. Remarkably, the two had initially dated in the 1960s, but went their separate ways later in life. It's clear that Lonnie Anderson has finally found a sense of stability and contentment in her personal life, which has allowed her to maintain a steady presence in the entertainment industry. Despite the many challenges she faced throughout her life, Lonnie remains an beloved figure in Hollywood, cherished for her undeniable talent and timeless beauty. As she approaches her 80th year, 
Lonnie Anderson serves as a testament to the enduring power of resilience and determination. Her legacy continues to inspire new generations of actresses, and her iconic status remains unshaken. Lonnie Anderson's story is one of triumph over adversity, a true Hollywood tale of a woman who refused to be defined by her struggles and instead carved out a lasting place for herself in the annals of entertainment history. Anderson has referred to this union as destiny, noting that she had married the man she should have married back in 1963. This fourth marriage represents a new chapter in her personal life, bringing her joy and contentment after a series of relationships and life experiences. Actress Lonnie Anderson found herself in the role of caregiver for both of her parents, who were afflicted by chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. During this challenging period, she was taken aback to discover that her parents, despite experiencing the debilitating effects of the disease, were unwilling to quit smoking. Lonnie was genuinely surprised by their reluctance to give up smoking, considering the distressing symptoms they were experiencing, such as severe coughing fits, shortness of breath, and the sensation of drowning. She couldn't fathom why her parents would continue to smoke in the face of such suffering. As a non-smoker herself, Lonnie found it difficult to fully comprehend the addictive nature of cigarette smoking. She acknowledged that some experts have compared quitting smoking to the difficulty of quitting a highly addictive substance like heroin. She admitted, It's hard for me to relate to, as she had never personally experienced the intense grip of nicotine addiction. Nonetheless, she witnessed the extent of her parents' suffering and the struggle they faced, which left a lasting impact on her. Lonnie Anderson's experience as a caregiver for her parents with COPD led her to advocate for raising awareness about the challenges of quitting smoking and the devastating effects of this preventable disease. She hoped to encourage smokers to recognize the severity of the addiction and the risks to their health. Drawing from her personal experiences and the profound impact it had on her family, Lonnie Anderson has been a dedicated advocate for COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, awareness long before the condition was widely recognized by the public, even when it was still referred to as emphysema. COPD is primarily caused by prolonged exposure to smoke, often stemming from cigarette smoke, which results in obstructed airflow in the lungs, leading to breathing difficulties. Individuals with COPD also face an increased risk of developing other serious health issues, including heart disease, lung cancer, and various related diseases. Tragically, both of Lonnie Anderson's parents succumbed to this debilitating disease, which has fueled her passionate commitment to raising awareness about the dangers of COPD and educating the public, with a particular emphasis on young people, about the associated risks. Lonnie Anderson's advocacy efforts aim to shed light on the significance of recognizing and addressing the challenges presented by COPD, underscoring the importance of smoke exposure reduction and the potential consequences of untreated or undiagnosed COPD. Her personal experiences with the disease within her own family serve as a powerful motivator in her ongoing mission to promote awareness and prevent the suffering that COPD can cause especially among younger generations. Lonnie Anderson vividly recalls the pivotal moment when she became determined to take more significant action in combating the spread of COPD, a devastating disease closely associated with smoking. Her motivation came when her son was around the age of 10, an age when children often look up to TV or movie characters as heroes and role models. One day, her son watched a character on TV who smoked and was evidently captivated by this portrayal. He decided to imitate the character by putting on glasses, dressing up in a costume complete with a hat, and even holding a pencil in his mouth to mimic the act of smoking. This display deeply concerned Lonnie. She realized that her son, like many children, was impressionable and influenced by what he saw in the media. Lonnie Anderson's own upbringing provided a striking backdrop for her determination to take action against smoking-related diseases. She recounted that her parents were constant smokers, and smoking was an integral part of their lifestyle. 
they smoked everywhere, be it at work, during cocktail parties, or even first thing in the morning. The habit was pervasive, and she and her sister referred to it as the purple haze. Unfortunately, she witnessed firsthand the detrimental effects this lifestyle had on her parents, tragically cutting their lives short by decades. Observing her son pretending to smoke in emulation of a character on TV served as a wake-up call for Lonnie. She recognized that she needed to intervene and make a difference. She decided to involve her son in her mission to combat COPD, emphasizing the importance of ensuring that other children get to have their parents and grandparents in their lives. She reminded him that he never had the opportunity to know his own grandparents because they passed away prematurely, even before he was born. By making her son a part of her advocacy, she hoped to instill the significance of preventing the suffering and loss that can result from smoking-related diseases, thereby safeguarding the well-being of future generations. Lonnie Anderson has taken her advocacy for COPD awareness all across the country, tirelessly spreading the message about how to prevent and combat this debilitating disease. Her efforts have encompassed a wide range of venues, from care facilities to high schools, as she seeks to reach various demographics with her important message. One of the places she visited during her awareness campaign was senior living facilities, where she interacted with individuals who were severely disabled due to COPD. She observed the profound impact of the disease to the extent that even simple tasks like taking a shower required all of a person's breath. She thought that witnessing a grandparent in such a condition would be a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of smoking and COPD and could motivate people to reconsider their smoking habits. However, she acknowledged that quitting smoking is far from straightforward. Lonnie emphasized that even if someone decides to quit smoking, there is no way to completely reverse the lung damage that has already occurred. The effects of long-term smoking are enduring, making it critical for individuals to avoid smoking altogether, especially from a young age. She also shared her experiences of visiting high schools as part of her awareness campaign. However, she believes that to truly make an impact, discussions about the dangers of smoking and COPD need to begin even earlier, ideally with junior high school students. Starting these conversations at a younger age can help prevent young individuals from ever taking up smoking and suffering the consequences later in life. Reflecting on her own family's experience, Lonnie lamented the lost time she could have shared with her parents, who tragically passed away in their early 50s and 60s due to smoking and COPD. She expressed a deep sense of loss, as they could have been part of her children's lives, watching them grow and potentially living for another three or four decades. Regrettably, that possibility was denied to her, but she remains committed to her advocacy work to ensure that other families do not endure the same tragic fate. Her mission is to prevent the suffering and loss caused by COPD, especially among future generations. What do you think about Lonnie Anderson's complicated life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos.